Yeah, I've just did an hour hike up the back end of Chapman's Peak here in South Africa and Hart Bay. You can see Hart Bay uh, behind me with the Sentinel, very iconic landscape photography spot here for the locals in South Africa. So making myself a little cup of coffee, got you nice and early so I can scout the location. And today I'm going to be talking to you about focus stacking. And this will be using a wide angle lens. Today I'll be using a 14 to 24 mil lens. And we're going to look at how we can create depth and beautiful layers in our landscape photography and make sure that it is pin sharp from the front all the way to the back of our image. So what I want to add into my image that's important for focus stacking is I want to get really close to these small purple flowers as the light's catching them. I find them very pretty in the foreground. As you can see, my tripod setup is quite interesting to try and capture them. But the reason I want to do that is if I get behind my camera and just show you what I'm actually trying to capture, you can see I have the flowers down here in the bottom and I have this leading line with the beautiful water motion leading me into the background of the Sentinel Peak with some color clouds in the sky. So that's what I'm trying to capture. I'm trying to get these flowers in the foreground, the beautiful curve going all the way around to Hart Bay and then your eye ends up on the Sentinel over there. So the problem I'm going to have which is immediately apparent is because the flowers are so close to the actual camera that I'm going to have focusing issues. Obviously, the, either I have to choose between the foreground or the background um, if I want to have everything in focus in one shot. However, what we're going to do today is we're going to do some focus stacking and what we are going to stack is we are going to shoot a single image for the flowers. We are going to shoot an image for our rock over here, one for the background and potentially one for the sky. So we're going to have four or five different layers so that we can get this entire scene in focus. So I'm going to show you how to shoot that and then I'm also going to show you how to go about editing it. So something that's also nice with new mirrorless cameras or ones with touchscreen is you can set up the function that it will take the photo and focus on the area that you tap on. So you can do this for your different focus planes. Quickly, one, two, three, tap. You don't have to worry about bumping your camera and you've taken your images for focus stacking. And look how stunning this evening is turning out to be. Just waiting for the color to pop in the sky and we'll get those final images. I have the images I captured on Chapman's Peak Drive while I was out shooting. As you saw, I showed you the different layers that we were going to capture of the flowers and the rocks and the background with the sentinel in it. And these are the images that I captured. Now they all look the same, one, two, and three, and that is because they are the same, they're the same settings and everything. The only difference is that I focus stacked the different layers. So Number one is focused on the flowers, number two is focused on the rock in the center, and number three is focused on the mountains in the background. And this will give me the three different focus layers that I need to focus stack my images to get a image at the end that's in focus from the front all the way to the back. And just to go over the reason I did this was because the flowers were very close to my lens and I was having depth of field issues. That means that only the flowers are in focus and the rest of the image is out of focus or vice versa, depending on where my focus point was. If I was standing much further back from my foreground, if my foreground was more than two meters away from me, I would, wouldn't have this issue and everything would be in focus. So we're only doing focus stacking when our foreground is very close to us um, and very close to the camera and a good measure depends on your lens. You'd have to look up what the exact distance is. But generally, if your foreground is more than two meters away from your lens, you are generally pretty good at having mostly everything in focus if you're shooting at a high aperture number, such as f11 or f14. However, when we're close to our foreground, so the foreground is closer than two meters to the lens, we need to focus stack because we will have these depth of field issues. 
So for this particular image that I will be showing you, I think the flowers are about 60 centimeters away from the lens. And because they were closer than the two meter limit, I had to then do focus stacking to ensure that everything would be sharp throughout my image. And because of that, I did three layers. You can do more layers, but three is generally enough. Sometimes you can even get away with two if you really only have an immediate foreground layer and then a, a background layer. However, because I had this nice mid layer with the rocks in, I added in a extra focus layer. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up these three images in Photoshop as layers. I currently have them open in Lightroom. And to do that, we select all three. We right click on them. We go edit in and we select open as layers in Photoshop. Okay, just to save time, I have already opened them up in Photoshop. As you can see, my three layers on the right hand side here, one, two, three are open. And there's my image in the middle. Okay, to show you what I mean about the image being in focus or out of focus, I'm just going to zoom in on the flowers in the bottom corner and show you the different layers that I captured. So this is my focus layer for the flowers. As you can see, my flowers are nice and sharp at this point. If I switch off that layer, you can see the layer below them is slightly out of focus. And if I turn off that layer, which will show me the layer for the background, my flowers are also out of focus. Okay, if I do the same thing and I move to the background, you can see that my flower layer, which is this top one, the background is out of focus. And if I turn off those two layers, you can see, there we go, my background layer, the background is nice and in focus. So what we want to do is we want to have an image where our foreground, mid layer and background are all in focus. And we have a final image that's sharp from front all the way to the back. So to do this is a relatively easy technique and that's why I'm doing this very short video on it, but it's a very important skill to know how to do. And what we do is we select all three of our images, Command A or Alt A, go to Edit and scroll down to Auto Align Layers. So the first thing we have to do is we have to auto align our layers and we will say auto and we don't need to take anything else. You can do that when we do process our video our photos, but we just select auto. And what this is going to do is it's going to account for any slight distortion. When we are focusing through the layers, what happens is because we're focusing on the back layer, the front layer might look slightly distorted and accounts for any shifting or motion that may occur and it just aligns everything up together. When it's done, you normally will see a thin little white layer around the, the edge and that's just to show you that it has actually done something. It has moved a few of the layers into place and <clears throat> we know that everything is aligned now because we've done the auto align. Then once we've done the auto align, we're going to go back to edit. We're going to come down to auto blend layers. We're going to click auto blend layers and we're going to select stack images. So this is Photoshop's way of automatically selecting the sharpest areas in each photo and blending them all together in one image. So I've put text seamless tones and colors. That's fine. We don't need to content aware full in the areas. What we'll do is if there are any areas that just don't match, we're just going to crop them on the edges. So we've select stack images and then we select OK. And now Photoshop will blend those three layers together. Okay, and now Photoshop has done that. And if you go down to your layers, you can actually see the masks and see what it has actually taken from each layer. And you will see that it'll more or less take the sharpest areas out of each one. The top layer for the flowers, you can see the white mask is generally taken where the flowers are. My mid layer is taken mainly white from the middle of the frame. And for my background, it's taken mainly from the, the top of the background of the frame. So I'm just going to zoom in here and we can just scroll through and have a look. And I just want to show you now that we have focus from the front to the back of the image. So we can see our mountains in the back. The Sentinel is nice and sharp. As we scroll down, we can see our rock in the center is also very sharp. And when we scroll down to our flowers at the bottom, they're also perfectly sharp. 
So this is the quickest way and easiest way to do the auto stacking. That's just to use Photoshop's way with the auto align first and then auto blend. Very quick way to do it. Then we can flatten our image and just crop those little bits on the edge, which will give us a final image. that will look something like this on the screen now. So I know it was a very short video and I hope that was useful. It's just an important technique to know how to do, even though it's a simple technique, it's very important for landscape photography and making sure your images are sharp throughout. So please subscribe if you have any ideas or comments um, about the videos that I'm doing or anything you'd like me to do in the future, please send me a message and I will reply to you there.